so excited that all of you are spending an hour with us today to honor CMC's 75th anniversary. And of course, today, this month, our archives are focusing on uh, athletics at CMC. Of course, we know it fondly right now as CMS, but it has had other iterations in the past. So today, it's not just about CMS. It is about uh, all athletics at CMC over the last 75 years. Um, a few things about Zoom before we get going. First and foremost, at the bottom left, there is a mute button. Please make sure you are muted at all times unless you are speaking. Uh, there's also a chat button at the bottom. If you hit that chat button, uh, a box will pop open to the right. You'll see people are putting their name, their class year, uh, and maybe some other information in the chat. You can also talk to people in the chat, put questions in the chat. Uh, we'll be following the chat. It's always fun to see everyone conversing and catching up with each other in that chat box as well. At the top right, you'll see a view button and you can toggle between speaker view or gallery view depending on how you like to view Zoom. We are gonna be sharing screen when we're showing um, the uh, new archive uh, and also focusing on some of our athletic alumni when we uh, share stories from that era in CMC athletic history. So with that, uh, do um, feel free to chat with people uh, throughout the program. I am now going to share a screen and walk us into the archive. So for those of you that haven't visited 75.cmc.edu, please do so. It has an extensive account of the history of Claremont McKenna College and where we are going well into the centennial of the college and beyond, uh, whether you're learning more about the mission of the college, the great academic work of our faculty, how to get involved, uh, how to shop at the CMC supply shop at Shop CMC. Uh, there's a lot of things here for you to do. We're going to go into uh, history and the digital archive preview. Each month during the, our 75th anniversary, we have focused on a new exhibit. If you haven't visited here, it's a lot of fun. We have teaser pages and then more in depth, whether it's founding of a men's college to the transition to co-education, of course, now to athletics at CMC. So we're gonna hit this preview page here, uh, which is kind of a teaser for the archive, very high level, a lot of pretty um, dense information here. But what I want everyone to do next time you come is to actually click this button that says visit the archive. And when we do that, we'll get into this incredible uh, part of the, uh, the Omeka archives, CMC archives that our archivist Sean Stanley, who is here with us today, uh, has put together. And each month he puts together something new, something different, something that we can cherish during our 75th anniversary of CMC. And with that, Sean, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself uh, and walk us through briefly uh, the introduction to the archives, and then we'll hit our first page. Sure. Thanks, Evan, and thank you all for joining um, us this afternoon or evening. Um, so yeah, as Evan mentioned, uh, this month's exhibit is a focus on uh, the history of athletics at um, CMC, whether that be uh, you know uh, during the joint program era with Pomona College, uh, with Claremont Mud, or uh, kind of to our current era today as uh, CMS athletics with uh, Harvey Mudd and Scripps College. Um, so in, on each page here, we have kind of an introduction page that kind of gives an abstract about what uh, each exhibit entails. Um, I also do want to point out, Evan, if you could just scroll back up to the top, I want to thank um, uh, Mike Sutton, Chris Watts, and Jeremy Niffin for their hard work um, in compiling a lot of these uh, great moments of CMS history. We have a link out to the CMS webpage. Um, if you scroll down just a little bit, Evan, there's a hyperlink there that'll take you I'm oh, sorry, above the photo. Um, that'll take you to the CMS athletics page uh, where you can explore stories in uh, further detail. And also we have a link out to the share your story page on our 75th uh, anniversary website. So if you see anything that isn't covered or wanna share your own personal memories or stories, uh, please do follow that link uh, and you can uh, go ahead and submit that story. So the first page here is a kind of focus on the Pomona Claremont era. So. Um, this will focus on, uh, you know, roughly from 1946 up to the end of the 1950s. And this is primarily a focus on, um, you know, the founding of CMC uh, and uh, them joining with uh, Pomona College uh, as a joint athletics program, also physical education department. So you'll see here we have um, several uh, CMC players that uh, were part of the Pomona Claremont team. So Stanton Welsh here, a nice image of him. Uh, a couple of the uh, Pomona Claremont baseball players. Yeah, there's Stanton Welsh laying up a 
basketball in the uh, in the old gym there. And um, you know, much like uh, the rest of the country during this time, football really was king. Um, and you know that went for for Pomona Claremont as well. Um, football was immensely popular throughout the the late 1940s and 1950s, and we saw some of the first uh, uh, joint uh, Pomona Claremont Skyac titles. So um, the 1950 Skyac title, uh, followed by um, three straight from 1953 to 1955, and that really kind of set the bar high for uh, you know athletic success going forward. Um, aside from football. Um, there's also basketball was hugely popular. Also club sports, intramural sports, uh, it kept uh, kind of the camaraderie going on the early campus and uh, really kind of galvanized the, the early students uh, together. Um, now, as we're kind of moving through the history a little bit, um, while there was much success with, between uh, Pomona College and Claremont Men's College, um, by about the mid-decade period, um, you know, some, some um, threads begin to emerge that, uh, you know, kind of set the scene for, um, you know, basically the joint program unraveling. Um, some of the early uh, kind of um, uh, aspects that kind of um, lent itself to the, the, basically the disillusion of the joint program was um, Pomona College's identity largely overshadowed um, CMC, uh, you know, CMC being a new college. Um, and also President Benson had mentioned, you know, he had a desire for more CMC chants and yells and songs included in the uh, in the crowds during the football games and things like that. And also press coverage was largely uh, heavily Pomona centric. So by the mid 50s, we see uh, CMC starting to make some some moves uh, to break away from the joint program. We see the uh, the Ducey or sorry, the gymnasium, which eventually became Ducey Gym here. Uh, so we see uh, a lot of these construction projects kind of setting the scene for the next decade uh, once um, uh, Claremont or uh, yeah, CMC kind of broke away from Pomona College there. Um, so I think I'll turn it over. I don't want to spend too much time. I, I encourage you all to come back and, and visit this history. You know, there's so much history and so much, so many things to read through. Uh, you know, this could have been several exhibits on its own, but I do want to uh, give some time to our, our, our great speakers we have today and sharing some of their memories from this era. So without further ado, I think we'll turn it over to John and John. Yes, thanks, John. We have uh, from the 50s, John Poor and John Devereaux. We also have with us Mike Sutton, class of 76, former coach, former athletic director, and now director of advancement for athletics, who will be walking uh, some of our guests through a brief Q&A about their era. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Josh. And uh, so grateful to have John and John join us today, as well as uh, the rest of our group, we got 15 alums that decided that, that offered to, uh, to share some stories of their time. Um, so I don't want to, without further ado, I'd like to introduce John Devereaux, uh, football alum, Hall of Famer, class of 57, who has mastered Zoom now. John, welcome. And uh, you have a story to share with us. Far from mastering Zoom, but I'll do my best here on <laughs> going through what I'm trying to say. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be part of this for sure. Uh, my best experiences at CMC was playing for the four years at Pomona Claremont football. It resulted in many long friendships. We had excellent experienced coaches. Fuzz Merritt was our head coach and Jess Cohn was his assistant. And Fuzz was renowned for coaching the single wing beginning in 1935 when he started coaching. And Jess was a Stanford star defensive genius, I would call him, and he conditioned us to be tougher than nails. No question about that. Our teams had between 25 and 35 players in those days, compared to what, 75 to 100 today? I can't <laughs> believe it. We played both offense and defense. CMC Stags helped Pomona win three consecutive championships, as just mentioned, 53 to 55. And this set records from the beginning of interclass, intercollegiate play in 1895, dating that far back. Ernie Smith's 56 had the distinction of being one of those three champ on three of those championship teams. Rusty Gross was our best player by far. Some of us competed during all four years against Occidental College and its outstanding quarterback, Jack Kemp, who later played 13 years of pro football. 
you may have heard of Jack. And it's tight end Jim Mora, who had a 15 year head coaching career in the NFL. He played them both for four years. At a sports luncheon I attended in Los Angeles years ago, guest speaker Jack Kemp was asked what team was the best he ever played. Believe it or not, his answer was Pomona Claremont, not a pro team as expected, which was a great surprise and excitement for those of us that were there. Football and other sports set standards for us, including following directions, enjoying competing, always optimistic, cooperating as a team, and never quitting while supporting each other, win or lose. President George Benson had the foresight to have CMC join Pomona's sports program. Competing certainly adds an important balance to all of our lives. Thank you so much. John, it's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Let me turn it over to uh, another Hall of Famer, John Poor, basketball and golf alum, who uh, has uh, been helpful in developing the Hall of Fame over all the years of its existence. John? Only 30 years, Mike. Uh, <laughs> When I first set foot on, on campus as a freshman in 1954, that's some 67 years ago, yikes. In my wildest <laughs> dreams, I couldn't imagine what the campus would look like today or how the athletics have grown to be what they are. Uh, as John Devereaux mentioned, football was very big uh, in the 50s. I looked up some pictures. They didn't wear face, they had their helmets, they didn't wear face <laughs> cards. Maybe that's John, maybe that's some of the reasons. Anyway. Um, actually, it was okay being a sage hen then because so many of my teammates were from Pomona and some became lifetime friends. The name Staggs was just around the corner. Uh, I just missed it. I had some athletic heroes when I was at CMC. John Whittem, class of 55. He was built like a wrestler, ran over everyone in football, played guard on the basketball team, and on any day he could shoot in the low 70s on the golf course. Uh, Ernie Smith just mentioned, class of 56, was big, looked like a, an athlete, and was in football and track and field. Gary Bazance, class of 56, played my two sports, basketball and golf, only better. And finally, Pete Wells, class of 50, not in my class, but maybe the best all around athlete of all time at CMC. He played four sports, maybe five sports, all at the highest level. Some of those track records lasted for over 50 years. Right. All of these athletes are in the Hall of Fame. Pete Welsh was the first inducted. Now, I can hardly wait to hear what happened when CMC actually became the Stags. So that's next. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, that, that was a wonderful, wonderful start to our program here today. We are going to, to swing over and go pick that up right now, Sean. Thank you, John and John and Mike. Um, yeah, so as we mentioned, this takes us to our next era, which is the uh, Claremont Mud Stags era. So this page focuses on, you know, from the end of the 50s up until about 1975 or so, right, just before uh, the education period. Um, and we see a photo here, uh, President Benson and newly appointed athletic director, Bill Arce. Um, and they were actually able, uh, they submitted the, uh, the uh, resignation from the joint program with Pomona in 1957. And they were, uh, at the same time, Harvey Mudd um, College was just recently founded. So they were able to, um, to bring in Harvey Mudd College uh, into a new joint program together uh, to compete under the moniker of Claremont Mudd Stags. Um, and Harvey Mudd, who was a, a CMC, both a CMC and HMC trustee, uh, actually gave a gift of $100,000 to help underwrite the costs of the, this newly established um, athletic program. So again, this was kind of a traditional model um, uh, athletic program created two years required physical education, if not involved in intramural or varsity sports. Um, now, the Stags were initially independent for their first season uh, during 1958 and 59. And they joined the SkyAct Conference uh, the following year, uh, 59 and 60. Uh, and they competed in nine varsity sports at the time, football, water polo, cross country, basketball, baseball, golf, swimming and diving, tennis, and track and field. And we can see some of the early club sports. This was an early 
uh, kind of thought that the uh, athletics program might take maybe, you know, a more of a, uh, an emphasis on some of these social sports and activities rather than uh, kind of a football or traditional, um, uh, you know, sports centric uh, type of athletic program. So if we um, kind of go down the page a little bit, we can see some an early article here uh, advertising the first uh, um, Claremont Mud Stags football game here. It was actually against the Chino Institute for Men. So not a Skyac opponent, but uh, interesting nonetheless. Um, and then as we go a little bit further down the page, we are introduced- yeah, note, Sean, a lot of yes. the, the things in the archive are interactive. So you can actually click on them, view them, Correct. open them up, read through them. Yeah, and I should point out, um, you'll see links throughout the page here. So for instance, if there's a larger biography or a larger sports history story on the CMS athletics page, you can follow that link out to kind of read you know, the full story. Uh, get the full stats and everything. Um, so I would encourage you all to, uh, again, explore this uh, at, kind of at your leisure and click on the photos, uh, you know, kind of explore as much as possible. Um, but here we're introduced to Bill R.C. again, um, who kind of set the template and the foundation for kind of the CMC coach as more than just a coach, you know, a molder of character, a teacher, mentor. Uh, he really kind of uh, set that template in that regard. Um, you know, he was also a longtime coach to the baseball team and uh, made significant strides in uh, spreading the game um, throughout Europe and Asia. Um, and we highlight some of that here. And then we see some of the uh, construction projects and new facilities opening up throughout the throughout this era. So Voight Pool here with a nice uh, background shot of, of the CMC campus there. And then we have a nice color photo of a kickoff at a Stags football game. And then kind of continuing further down the page, we're, we're highlighting notable achievements, major championships and milestones. So I would encourage you all, we don't have time, unfortunately, to cover everything to, during this program, but I would encourage you again all uh, to come back and explore. And yeah, we'll show this yeah, video. I'm going to play this video and then I'm going to have Mike introduce our three guests. It's from the 50s, there is no sound. <laughs> that was our Hall of Famer, Steve Endemano, Harvey Mudd, uh, class of 71. We have three members of this era that are going to share a story with us today. Joe Bush, Steve, and Harry Wright. Harry has been um, an incredible archivist and a real, uh, really the glue of the developing the friends group of our football alumni as we've been going through here. But uh, I've known Joe for a long time and looked up to him as a, as a young stag swimmer and uh, appreciated him being here with us. And Steve, I've gotten to know in the last few years, just really grateful to have you three with us today. Joe, why don't you lead off here? Joe, you're oh, you are muted. got on mute. Hey there, sorry, I'll There we back. go. Okay, I thought you were controlling it. Um, <laughs> I was elected to the Hall of Fame in uh, 1997. And that election, I think, was due solely to the efforts of uh, our swimming coach, Des Farnaday. Um, Des was incredible. He would literally take each swimmer's stroke apart and then build that stroke back so that it was powerful and efficient. But more importantly, Des also knew how to get inside our heads so that we would race beyond expectations, especially at national. So for example, Alex Johnston in 68 was seated dead last in the 1650 freestyle, 36th, and he took a place. In 1969, Eric Jones was seated out of the money, and he won the 50 freestyle. And so what was true for those two was true for the entire team. In 1967, we were predicted to finish in eighth place with 99 points. Instead, we added 86 points to that and won CHM's first national championship. And that happened every year. In 68, the seeding sheets placed us ninth, but we took seventh, scoring 200 more points than we had been projected. In 1969, we again finished second, 
and we scored 129 more points than expected. And finally, in 1970, we finished second for the third straight year by scoring 107 points beyond what we had been predicted to do in the seedings. And how did that happen? It was Des Farnaday, the magic man. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, and, and I'll, I have something to say about Des when we're done here, but Steve, I'll let you have the floor right now. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Stephen Mono, Harvey Mudd, 71. I had the chance to play on that first uh, football game, uh, first football team that won the league championship. But we didn't start so well. Uh, Harry and I, we had seven losses in our first seven games, and it was pretty rough. And then we played Whittier College, and we pulled off the biggest upset, perhaps, in all of college football when we beat them. They were league champs. We were 0-7, and we beat them 29-28 at Claremont. But then the next year, we had a new coach, Coach Zinda, who brought us what we needed, great coaching as well as great athletes. And uh, we went on, and from that point, uh, from Whittier College on, we were 19-9. and nine. And we ended up being 8-1 and one and winning the league championship our senior year. Two things that I remember about our senior year was, one, we beat Redlands for the first time at their place, 35 to nothing. We dominated them. That was the first time we'd ever beat them. Hmm. And then Whittier College, that was the last game of our career at Whittier College. It was a tough game. We won it. But one thing that most people don't know is what happened at halftime. We, we went into a little trailer they had out in the parking lot next to the field, and we went through our halftime information and stuff, and we came out, and lo and behold, there was a massive tunnel created by our fans. Now, you got to remember, for our freshman year, family and friends were about the only ones in the stands. But that game at Whittier College, we were amazed by how many fans were there, but how many fans came out and created that tunnel. We had a kazoo band. I don't know if Harry remembers our old kazoo band. And we had a great time. And we brought the first championship. And great players, Sam Reese, Harry, so many guys, it's, it would be impossible to name them all. But it was a great time, and I had a great experience there. Awesome. Thanks so much, Steve. Steve was an awesome football player, as you saw, but also an outstanding track and field athlete for us, too, back then. And let's have hey, Harry, why don't you bring us home here? Okay. Thanks a lot for having me in here with all these uh, great Athena and Stags <laughs> luminaries. These are a lot of my heroes that are here tonight. I was asked to step in. I, I have a memory and I don't think I'll uh, copy anything that Steve has there. But one of my great memories, of course, is our senior year after everything we had uh, been through and playing on the Stags defense that year. Uh, eight out of the 11, it was a record, eight out of the 11 starters on defense were all conference. And uh, there were three future ho uh, Hall of Famers on that side of the ball, which I don't know has ever been replicated, but uh, a terrific uh, four-time SCIAC uh, selection. Sam Reese was a defensive end. Sam was the first African-American inducted into the Hall of Fame, and we lost Sam in December. Uh, a uh, terrible loss to Stags football, and he'll be uh, greatly missed. Uh, also, along with Sam was Bob Hayes, a defensive back, a three-sport star at CMS, football, baseball, and basketball. And Bob just has returned home after a, a scary stay in the hospital, and we're wishing uh, Bob Hayes really well. And, and then we had that, that guy on that other screen there who was a first-team All-American, Steve Anamano, all of us just acknowledged all the way along he, he was the greatest athlete any of us had ever played with. And that hasn't changed uh, over the years. But uh, anyway, my memory, the, my favorite memory was just being part of that defense. We were as competitive with each other as we were against our opponents. We were all vying to try to get the next big hit or get the next big turnover, you know, just you know, we probably like each other now way better than we did then because we were just piling into each other all the, all the time. But anyway, that uh, it didn't seem like that big of a deal other than we were excited about the championship until later, many years later, you start to look at the records 
and that 70 Stags defense still holds a half a dozen team records, a couple of which I don't know if ever they will ever be approached. Uh, one is 14 consecutive quarters without giving up a point. Think about high powered offenses. And we had three or four of the quarterbacks in that league are in their respective halls of fame. Another one that uh, it really stands for any four year college in Southern California. And that is in five of our games, we didn't allow our opponents to either kick a field goal or score a touchdown. And that one's lasted for a half century. Thanks. Harry, thank you. Yeah, that, there's our, our football archivist. Harry, thank you so much for what you have done to connect the many generations of, of stag football players uh, over the years. It's, it's terrific to have your uh, friendship and support. And uh, John Zinda and Des Farnaday, very special people to me in my life here at, at CMC as well. Thank you three for joining us today. I'll add my thanks, everyone. Our next page is the founding of CMS and the growth of women's athletics. Sean, walk us through this page. Sure, yeah. So we're moving into the co-education era. So this page looks at, uh, you know, kind of from 1976 up into the late 80s. So, you know, a two, or a two decade span almost. Um, so, yeah, we do want to touch upon uh, the, uh, the foundation or the forming of uh, the um, Athena's women's program. Uh, so, uh, CMC becoming co-educational in 1976, athletics followed suit, obviously, um, and joined in a partnership with uh, Scripps and Harvey Mudd students uh, to compete under the Athena's moniker. So, and we can see uh, Jerry Lahanis here. Um, I know Jody Burton's going to be speaking in just a few minutes, but um, these are some, some images of some of the early Athena's teams. Um, uh, at its founding, uh, there was five varsity teams, volleyball, basketball, swimming and diving and track and uh, tennis. And then in uh, the fall of 1977, a sixth sport uh, cross country was added. Um, and then as we kind of explore further down the page, uh, we see, so, again, some kind of notable highlights from, from both men and women's sports uh, from the era. So highlighting Hank Krieger, longtime tennis coach here, who is also a Hall of Fame member. And we touch upon some interesting kind of club uh, programs. So we have the bicycle racing program here. Um, it's an interesting story. So I would love you all to come back and read that uh, a proposed velodrome track being built, which never happened. But um, anyways, uh, again, we just have some, some notable highlights. Um, this was a, an era of a lot of firsts. So a lot of uh, first time NCAA tournament bursts, um, you know, in basketball, swimming, um, across country, uh, individual accomplishments in track and field. So I know Carl uh, Giles is highlighted just below that. Um, and then just kind of to kind of round out the decade, um, this was in 1987 and 88, this was the first time that CMS Athletics had captured the uh, uh, Skyac All Sports trophies, which uh, kind of measure success in men's, women's, and combined standings. Um, so that was the first, but certainly not the least. So this kind of set, set the stage for 12 in a row from 1993 to 2004 in the next decade and beyond. And then um, uh, CMS Athletics has taken home 29 of the last 30 trophy, uh, all sports trophies uh, from 2010 uh, or beginning in 2010 and 2011. We see Coach Sutton here. This is the start of a great run uh, from uh, water polo. Uh, who were dominant, which we'll see in the in the next uh, era as well, or the next decade. Circled there, <laughs> great mustache. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I, I do want to turn it over to our speakers, and because uh, I am, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, and so glad to have four key people to the development of our women's program with us today. We've got Gina Kalamura, Mary Tracy, Martha Cobb Shanks, and Jody Burton to speak. Um, Gina and Mary, why don't you lead us off and then Martha and then Jody, you bring us home. I'm going to start. Um, I'm Gina West Kawamura, Scripps class of 1981. And I did follow Mike's instructions and I wrote it down so I wouldn't go over my time. Um, I participated on the CMS volleyball track and field and cross country teams as a three port sport varsity letter athlete at my small Catholic New Mexico high school. I came to CMS with different athletic experiences than most of the other women. If they played sports at all in high school, most of them played through GAA, the Girls Athletic Association. 
At the beginning of CMS women's sports in the 70s, we weren't rebuilding a team. We were assembling and creating the original teams. We were tasked with finding athletes to compete to establish a program. We didn't have recruits. That was particularly true in track and field and cross country. We had to change the mindset of running for fun to running for fun and competition. Our program could only then be built. Convincing women who are succeeding in the classroom and applying those highly sought after non-cognitive traits of perseverance, motivation, and most importantly, teamwork was a priority for us. We talked so many women into running for our teams. We were the recruiters. But when they saw what they could, what, what could be accomplished, we had the foundation for the success of our cross country and track and field teams that continues today. Fortunately, we also had Mary Tracy, who dedicated the summer of 1978 to improving, and she continued that determination and dedication until graduation and beyond. As most of you know, she did compete in the Olympic trials in the marathon. Mary showed by example that we could be competitive athletes, even without high school and club experiences, and we could win. Our Skyac Cross Country Championship wasn't by luck. It happened because every member of our team believed that we could succeed. We literally put in a lot of miles. Although the distance coaches constantly changed, the shower facilities were questionable. We talked about that the other day. And we used a lot of team member cars as a consistent mode of transportation. As teammates, we supported each other in the individual milestones that came to each member. And yes, Jody Burton, we understood you had our back. It was hard work, but we also had some fun. Mary wasn't only our leader on the course and track, but was also more than willing to lead and participate in some of our mischievous behavior. She has a story, well, actually she remembers a lot more stories than I do, but she has a particular story to share that because we have so many football players attending this session, I think they will thoroughly enjoy this story that Mary has. And here's Mary. And she won't talk about herself because she's too modest. Thank you, Gina. As you can all tell, Gina was the brains of our group. So um, the story that I, she and I uh, kind of went back and forth on that we wanted to share with you all is um, one night after practice, we were in the line for Collins Hall. And the football team that year was really trying to build team spirit, et cetera. So the football coaches had built a bulletin board at Collins that had like the football player, defensive player of the week, uh, um, offensive player of the week, MVP, et cetera. And they also had hard rock player of the week. And when we're in line, I said to Jean, I said, you know, I really want to be hard rock player of the week. And she just looked at me and said, let's do it. So we were able to go and get all, uh, get the key and get in there and change out all the pictures of the football players with cross country runners. And needless to say, uh, it caused a little bit of a ruckus. Um, I don't know which was funnier, watching everybody's reaction to the pictures or having the football uh, coaches come after us. But um, anyway, they did, and we did return the pictures, but I don't think we got in much trouble for it. But it just goes to show what a great team we had and how much fun we had together. And to Gina's point, it, it was all self uh built and um, we had good coaches, but it was really each of us going through the uh, experience and Gina, you know, had our back all the time and she was one of our best inspiration on the team and I, it was a privilege and an honor to run with you, Gina. So anyway, thank you all for the time and uh, have a good evening. Thanks, Mary. Martha, how are you? Can't hear you, Martha. Hi, Martha Shanks. Um, Martha Cobb Shanks. I did grow up in Portland, Oregon and started in CMC in the fall of 1980 um, and graduated in May of 1984. And during that time, I did play four years of volleyball. Um, like everyone here, I was asked to share something and, and very similar to the two women who just spoke. I mean, I had some very similar experiences, maybe a little bit behind them, but similar in um, where we were at at CMC. Um, first of all, I would say is a, a really strong memory for me was just joining volleyball my freshman year. Um, first of all, I had Jody Burton as our co as coach, and she was she recruited me all the way up from Portland, Oregon. 
Um, and the older teammates were so inviting and very gracious and helped me acclimate very much towards college life and CMC specifically. It was a really warm atmosphere. And I could sense that we were building on um, the volleyball program as we move forward. Um, and then Mike Sutton reminded me of the couch burning incident that we had my freshman year, which was quite a quite an event um, the night before one of our big football games. I was like, oh my God, yes, I remember that now. Um, as I reflect on this section that I'm talking about, the founding of CMS and the growth of women's athletics, and I look back now and I really see very clearly that we were in that phase, like that's a great title. Um, I may not have understood that at the time, but um, I remember all you coaches were extremely young and energetic and doing everything you could to build this program and build it for the next years to come. And that was, that was where we were part of. And I, I enjoyed that. Um, in a different, in another phase and another interesting point that I wanted to make is that it was kind of a different time and place, less pressure in some degree. Um, I was speaking with another graduate I don't know if you guys remember Sandy Goodnow is now Sandy Hara and um, there's about seven or eight of us that get together every year. Um, we've been doing it for about 30 years and looking back at that group, more than half of us all played women's sports. So it was tennis, it was volleyball, it was basketball. Um, and that's really amazing. And Sandy's comment to me was she loved being in college and loved playing a sport and loved that D3 experience, which totally existed at CMC in those days. Um, you could play and still have a full college life. And that was really realistic to me. I mean, that's what I remember um, in addition to, you know, being competitive on the court. So it was a, it was really a wonderful experience when I thought through the memories of, of talk, speaking today. So thank you very much. Thanks, Martha. Mm -hmm. So Jody, bring us home here. I'm muted. Okay, good. I did that. Um, it's it's fabulous to see and share the, the the screen with these power women because they really were power women and Martha Martha played in a, a uh, um, she played at a, a volleyball game against a team that had three All Americans on it and she dominated and you did not want to be on the receiving end of one of her spikes that's for sure uh, Gina was Gina and Mary were fabulous runners they just they destroyed the competition. They're, they're very humble, but they were they they did destroy the competition and build our program. Um, I, I'm glad that the shower facilities are much better now, Gina, because a sauna room was like taking a shower in Houston heat in July. So yeah, but, so I'm honored to honored to share this time with you. I uh, I also want to take a quick shout out to Jim Gervang. I, I think I saw him in the notes. Uh, he was a men's basketball player, talented men's basketball player my first year. And I don't know if Martha the next year, if he was doing it, but he, he put up that dang volleyball net for me every single day. And back then, oh, those volleyball nets were terrible. So I, uh, I want to say thank you, Jim. You made my, my volleyball tolerable. Um, I remember a young basketball team uh, I, I remember a young basketball team that was a 30 point underdog in my first five years and UC San Diego was coming to, a, to Ducey gym and they came out winning. We won that game, much to the shock of, of everybody in our league. I remember Felicia Davis, I know she's on this, this uh, uh, program. She made two free throws at the end of the Pomona Pitzer game in a packed Ducey gym to win that game for us. That's very memorable. Stacy McElroy, uh, in our first championship, she, I, I caught her not paying attention, but I, next time I, time I looked at her, she was on the top of the basket, breakaway baskets, sitting, celebrating our first championship. And DT, I know she's part of the program. She shut down opponents, the best, our opponents' best players over and over again. And I think Felicia would say she also set some pretty solid, tough screens for her to get a shot. Um, I, Watching our five women uh, bond as, as we went to a national championship for golf, much to the dismay, we won that national championship, but much to the dismay of all the other teams, those five were laughing, singing, dancing on the driving range through the parking lot. The music in the van drive over was pretty loud and all six had fun for six days. And 
in that fund, we won a national championship. I also want to mention that our first national championship, although it wasn't uh, technically an NCAA championship, was in water polo. And Pam Tanasi was the head coach that led them to that national championship. She was also a phenomenal CMS diver. So I wanted to, to reach out to her. But uh, the other couple of things I want to say really quickly, sorry, Mike, I'm going over. Yeah, um, Jody, everybody, we got it. Yeah, <laughs> we got to move. Yeah. Yeah, did everybody see the SCHM? That's what we were when I first arrived. And uh, our women's teams are dang good. And mm -hmm. we've won 133 Skyac championships and Skyac tournaments over the years. We've won, we had the year of the Athena and we won three <coughs> national championships and had four NCAA individual champions. But I think, I think the most important thing is what you've seen already in this presentation is the camaraderie of, of the women that built this program. And, and uh, made it uh, uh, encouraged and made an atmosphere where, where other women could achieve after them. And that's why we are as good as we are in women's athletics today. Yeah, true, so true. Thank you, Jody. Thank you all. Yeah, we are, uh, we're gonna scoot through the, the later part. I didn't wanna shortchange people, but we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to move here. Or we're gonna run out, of, run out of time, folks. Yeah, I'll be quick with this, uh, these kind of previews. So next page here, we're looking at the, the era of 1990s, basically. So we call it Sky Act Dominance. Uh, this, this was the era of, uh, you know, great runs, you know, back-to-back -back consecutive championships and things like that in different sports. It's also the, uh, the, the founding of the uh, Ted Ducey CMS Hall of Fame. The first class was inducted in uh, 1991 um, and, you know, has continued ever since. So one of these teams that we highlight, uh, John Goldhammer's um, track and, or, or the John Goldhammer coach track and field team, uh, you know, combine just dominance in, in, in track and field in both men's and women's competition, as well as cross country. And we also see the, uh, the opening of the, uh, or dedication of the Axel Rood Aquatic Center, which ushered in a, a new era for swimming and diving and uh, water polo. Uh, so we can see an, a nice image there of the, the inaugural game against Washington and Lee, uh, which kind of ironically, unfortunately, we lost uh, the opening game, right, Mike? But uh, no, it was it was later. But yeah, OK, we, yeah, <laughs> that was one of the few we won that year. Yeah. OK, <laughs> yeah, but much success to come beyond that. Anyways, we have a nice, uh, a great article here of, of Jody Burton and, and David Wells, the uh, husband and wife coaching duo. Um, that highlights their success in basketball across, uh, you know, several generations. Um, so do please come back and explore some of these when you have time. Uh, we should mention, you know, the, uh, the passing of, of John Zinda, a longtime football coach, athletics director, um, and the subsequent dedication of uh, the football field, Zinda Field, in his honor. So we have a nice shot of that here. And um, yeah, just beyond that, again, we're highlighting both kind of team and individual accomplishments. I won't go through them all here, but um, you know, this is a, a great era of, uh, you know, much success in, in the SCIAC conference. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, and we have three of our Hall of Famers uh, from this era who are with us right now, Wendy, Tom, and DT, and I hope you will be able to share a memory here uh, the, with the group as we have evolved. Wendy? Sure, I'll start. Um, I'm Wendy Cole Pratt. I'll add Cole just because that was my name when I was at Claremont. Um, graduated in 1992, played soccer all four years, and I'm honored to follow those four amazing women that just spoke um, as another female Athena. So um, go Athenas. When Mike asked me to do this, um, immediately said yes, changed meetings around. I'm in a hotel, so sorry for the background, but made it happen because I love Claremont and I would do anything for the school. And I was thinking about a memory. And um, one thing that just kept coming into my mind, two things actually, one is our, just this road trip we took, which super limited budget, as you guys can all probably relate to. And we went to Chico and um, Santa Cruz and both were, I believe at the time D2, Chico may have even been D1. But we went up there in two vans. I had to get a special license to drive the, one of the vans. And I was a freshman, which is classic. That's a whole nother story. So we drove, we beat both teams, which was quite an accomplishment. And um, 
you know, crammed in two hotel rooms and just truly bonded. And it's, I think this is really telling. We have, um, we, we have a text group from that team that's called Championship Athena. Still to this day, I could show you it on my phone. It's very active. There's 16 of us and we won Skyac um, my freshman year for the second year in a row. And we, we've gotten together in Colorado twice with Kristen Heath at her place. We've gotten together. We went to Carmel this last fall and it's such a tight group still, um, which is pretty unbelievable um, and says a lot, I think, to the team, to Claremont, um, our, my coach. Another memory I have is my coach I was very close to because he was my high school coach, Bruce Myrie. But I used to go in his office um, and Grail Howlett, I don't know, I'm sure most of you know who he is. They shared an office and he became like, almost like a father to me. I mean, he gave me advice. He, we would walk to Collins and he would just tell funny stories. If any of you know him, I'm sure you can relate to my sentiments, but wow, a lot of my memories were of Grail Howlett. I told Bruce, my coach that he's like, that is so funny. I don't know, if, are you gonna really say that on this presentation? I said, absolutely. He was like, I, he was a big part of my experience there. So um, that was that was special too, just feeling like a family. And I think I'm reiterating what a lot of you said as well. And um, I need to finish this up. But one other thing I just want to say is soccer at Claremont really defined my experience and truly defined me as I like grew into adulthood. I think everything I learned has helped me in my career um, and just in life. So I look back on my time at Claremont very warmly and a lot of it has to do with my athletic experience and my teammates. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. Uh, I think you speak for a lot of us here. Yeah. 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 Go to DT, Mike. Yeah, I'm going to go and, and ask DT. You know, Diana, as, as most of you know, is our now CMC's Dean of Students. And I've watched her as a student athlete, as a coach, as as a PhD candidate and somebody who we, you know, is probably the smartest person that hung out with us all these years. Diana, we're so glad that you are on our team and how, what your supportive role for athletics is today. But Diana, give us, give us a, a quick shout about uh, what you see. Yeah, absolutely. I would just say, I mean, God, we could talk forever, all of us, right? All those amazing <laughs> stories and um, many thanks to all of those that have already talked about how much of the foundation you laid for the student athletes of today. Um, what I remember most in terms of Skyac dominance is just that we were um, expected to be good. And I think that that is just characterizes Claremont Mud and Scripps. These are colleges that if they're going to do something, they're going to do it well. The expectation is that you go in, you put everything into it, and we're going to win while we're at it um, and have a good time. And that was 100% my experience. Hello. Hello. A legacy that um, gotcha, all of the athletic directors and most recently Erica have really inculcated across the campuses. And I'm just immensely proud to um, have been and continue to be a part of it. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Diana, you were, you're great. Thank you. <laughs> Tom? I'm sorry about that. You know, 30 <laughs> years of, 30 years of retrospect, I guess, and now serving as a high school coach myself, I think when you look at the dominance that started with, with CMC sports in this era, it's all about the coaches. Two of the people who are the most influential in my life of all time, uh, Pat Murphy, who was the first person I met, who was the baseball coach, because I came to play baseball, introduced me to Bill Arce on my first trip. And I'd say Pat Murphy was the reason I went to CMC. And the ironic part is I never actually played baseball for him because he left. Played one year baseball and then Grail Hallett was uh, definitely the most influential person in my life. And uh, without him, I wouldn't have had the life I have. But I also look at that time you had Coach Wells and Burton, Coach Goldhammer, Coach Zinda. And whenever I go back to the dorms with other students, we talked about our coaches and the love we had for them and the respect we shared for them, regardless of the sport, we all cared about them and we wanted to do well for our coaches as well as our teammates. And uh, as far as our golf team, I was lucky because my teammates were supportive of a new player who'd never played golf before and they helped me get better. But that was a lot because of Real Howlett welcoming me to the team and just saying, come on out. And again, like I said, I think it starts with the coaching staff that CMC, the CMS had at that time that they cared so much that athletes wanted to improve and do the best they could for the coaches because we knew they were all in. Thank you, Tom. That's great. Those are, are great memories and they, they run through the generations, don't they?
Yeah. So, Sean, we have one more segment. Yes, we do. It'll be the last page of our exhibit, uh, which we titled CMS in the New Millennium. Not so new anymore, but this covers from 2000 up to the present day. And uh, again, we're just highlighting some of these notable accomplishments. Um, I do want to mention um, with the passing of David Wells in 2001, uh, we re renamed the uh, basketball tournament David Wells Classic in his honor. So we cover that story uh, in depth in this uh, uh, kind of last page here. Um, exploring further down the page a little bit, um, we kind of highlight uh, again, the uh, the addition of some new sports. So uh, women's lacrosse um, established in 2003 or founded in 2003 and quickly uh, kind of established itself as a power program. And then we see the construction of a lot of these new state-of-the-art athletics facilities. So the first being the uh, uh, Byzance Family Tennis Center uh, followed uh, soon after, just beyond this a little bit, by uh, Roberts Pavilion, which took um, took the place of uh, Ducey Gym. Uh, so again, state-of-the-art facilities, uh, a new main arena for basketball, volleyball, and then, you know, state-of-the-art workout equi equipment. And so it's, uh, you know, something dedicated to both uh, varsity sports as well as, you know, physical education, and intramural sports as well. Um, and I know Jody mentioned um, previously the year, the Athena, so we highlight that here. Uh, this was the academic year when um, three team national championships were, ca were uh, captured, in addition to three additional uh, individual uh, championships um, in uh, track and field, which we highlight at the end there as well. And I'd be remiss to, to leave out uh, kind of our current club sports across the Claremont Colleges, so we've highlighted a few of those, um, uh, men and women's uh, um, rugby, uh, men's lacrosse, and then um, uh, the um, Claremont College's men's ultimate Frisbee team. Um, so I do want to leave some time for, for our final round of speakers and then, you know, happy to stay on for a little bit to take Q&A or to, to mingle with you all as well. Thank you. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, we have two, two of our uh, members of our national champ, our most recent national championship teams to join us, and uh, that Joe Dorn and Margo Arnson. Margo had a family emergency that uh, took her away, but she did send us a video. But Joe, why don't you uh, share, share her memory for us and then we'll, we'll share Margo afterwards. Awesome, will do. Hey everyone, glad to be here. Uh, I do see a theme with some of these stories as far as travel and kind of like team bonding. And that was one that I chose as like a favorite memory that sticks out. Um, I will say that our budget has increased and the tennis team was quite, quite lucky to have like pretty good travel and we were able to fly across my senior year, uh, 2015, we were able to fly to DC uh, and do a spring break trip. And I'm actually from Washington, DC. So the whole team stayed at my house, my parents took dinner. And I just remember like that being an awesome bonding trip. Um, in particular, we played at uh, UPenn uh, where our coach Paul Settles actually went to school. And that was a division one team. So quite good competition. And we actually played them really tough. We lost, but I remember that kind of being like a bonding moment for our team and having a really tight meeting after where we kind of like kind of just realized and looked at each other and knew we could uh, win the national championship that year. And we had pr previously lost in the finals the last two years. Um, so there's a little bit of pressure, but I remember that match and that trip kind of just being a turning point and we just kind of kept, kept trending upwards from there. Um, but yeah, just traveling and spending time like in close quarters with your teammates I think that's what everyone kind of looks back on fondly. You know, the wins, the losses, those are, it's awesome to win a lot. Winning's fun. Um, but those bonding moments are what like, yeah, I rem really remember. So thank you. Amen, Joe. Thank you. Loving that beard. And here's from Margo Arnson from our volleyball team. Hi, everyone. My name is Margo Arnson. I'm so sorry I couldn't be with you all tonight, but Mike was kind enough to let me record this video instead. I was part of the CMS women's volleyball team who clinched the 2017 national championship title. And I have to say, I feel like our team's experience sort of embodies the idea of CMS in a new millennium, in large part because we were the clear underdogs going into that tournament, yet we were really able to defy the odds, come together as a team and clinch that championship. And in large part, I feel like our team really has to thank the entire CMS athletics community and the CMS athletics department and the coaching staff especially. 
I feel like it was not only the work of the team that year, but also the entire community that helped us win that championship. And it was really amazing to see just how much everyone came together and rallied around us. And I will forever hold those memories in my heart. So, so we're missing Margot, wishing she was here. She was a stellar personality in our program. And one of the things I will just say is that across the generations here, what I'm seeing is so much of the same thing. And we owe so much to Bill Arce, who had the vision that all sports were major to those people participating. And he laid the foundation that we could all uh, enjoy that experience. Um, so I have the great pleasure right now of introducing someone who I'm especially glad to know. She joined us two, three years ago. She's in her third year now and uh, trying to find a way to to uh, to do the job that she was hired for and not have to navigate COVID all the time. But Erica, we're so glad you're here. You are you are the person to lead us in to the next phase of CMS athletics for sure. Well, thanks a lot, Mike, and really just happy to be here and to be able to listen to everyone's stories. Want to thank all our panelists for sharing your stories and. As I'm kind of listening and reflecting, clearly there's a lot of winning in almost every one of those stories, even if our you know, alums didn't actually mention the championships that they won, um, but almost everyone's story and their memories of their experience is about relationships, whether it's with their coaches, their teammates, and kind of the amazing experience they all had as student athletes as a result. And for me, that's really what it's all about and um, why I love what I get to do. Um, I'm incredibly and proud to be the director of athletics here. And it's definitely a tall order <laughs> to build on this legacy created by the Athena and SAG alums but it's also a great honor to do so. Um, I think all of you would be really proud of our coaches and our current student athletes. They really are incredible. And we hope to continue to make you proud with our efforts, not only on the fields of competition, but also um, as leaders in the classroom and hopefully our campuses and in our communities. So I'm really honored to be a part of this and probably need to give Mike a great shout out for being a wonderful fast pass in my first two, three years here on the job. and. Uh, being the ultimate CMS fan still. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Erica. Thanks, Thanks Erica. Mike. Uh, we have a couple of questions from the audience that I think are actually great for both of you. So I'm going to leave you two on the hot seat, so to speak, <laughs> ask a couple of questions. Uh, of course, we are at 502. So if you need to depart, feel free to do so. And if you want to stay on, we're happy to have you uh, with us still. Uh, someone uh, is very curious, uh, Jay Tremblay from Chicago, would you go back to a combined program for a large sport such as football? So maybe more than just CMS, maybe a five college or something like that. What are our thoughts on Mike, do you want me to go first? I, I, you've probably had the most recent conversation on that topic. I've been through it a few times. I think yeah. even if we wanted to, which I'm not saying we would, the NCAA at Division Three and the SCIAC wouldn't let us. We would be yeah. um, much too dominant. And uh, that's been the messaging that I think a lot of people have gotten over the years. Yeah. Mike, is that accurate? Yeah, that's that's the latest deal. There, there really would be no, almost no place for us to play then. We'd end up being a club team, which would diminish what we have tried to do. So as challenging as it is to have an 80 person roster, you know, for us, I think that, you know, Kyle Sweeney and the coaches who have, have run the football programs over the years have done a wonderful job of keeping us competitive in the mix. Even if we're not winning championships every year, we're in the hunt. What was our mascot when we were um, uh, Pomona Claremont? There's a little, cause I think at some point we showed the stag, but we weren't, it hadn't gotten past 1957 yet. And then a follow-up from Allison, from Jeff's question on that, is when we became CMS, was there any thought of being a single mascot? <laughs> I know John Perand is on here too. He might have some backstory there as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think John and John mentioned this. They were the, the, the CMC men that went to play on Pomona Claremont's teams had to be Sage Hens. Um, and so I... Personally, that would be a little rough, but you know. But I think that their dear friends, their dear friendships, and their teammates made it all worthwhile. And uh, you know, Jody and I started in '79 together, and it was right after we had um, moved into the co-ed world. And, and as we mentioned, there was the Scripps Claremont Harvey Mud for a while there, and SCHM just didn't really work out well on our jerseys, um, so we changed that to CMS. 
Jody might know better than I. I've heard all kinds of stories. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, you know, start some crazy story about there. But I know there were many opportunities. I know that Stags was not going to fly for our women's program, and so the question was, what do we do? So I think the Athena, to me, the goddess of wisdom or the goddess of war, pick the day, right? And uh, and there we go. Yeah, you're you're right, Mike. Um, <laughs> we, but. Uh, Stag, Stag had uh, very male connotations back in that day, and there was no way a women's college was going to be a Stag. Mm -hmm. And so that thus came the Athenas. And we had several conversations later about going to one, one mascot, but uh, there was a strong Stag presence, and they did not want to change that mascot. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, not sure the, I'm not sure the Athenas would want to change it now either. So I, Amen. I That's right. Yeah. The, the identity has been defined, right? Yeah. You know, I know Jeff Arce is is on the Zoom and Jeff Russell too. There were people, there were so many great people to invite to participate today. And I'm sorry we we don't have, you know, so many hours that we could we could do this. Although we could, we'll do that at reunion weekend, right, Jeff? You know, right, Evan? Well, so, uh, absolutely. We'll get together then. Yeah. But Jeff, I, did, I think I did, I did spotlight Jeff because he put a, yeah. a nice comment uh, about Yeah, I think it'd be great for Jeff to to share a memory. Uh I'm just glad I could participate and listen to all this and, you know, seeing some names back here is interesting for me because I was on campus long before I actually attended CMC and I was a bat boy and I'd go to the football games and I remember seeing a lot of the, a lot of the people and faces and names The faces were a little bit different back then, but um, yeah, I was able to see John, you know, run down the, the football field or Steve and um, you know, Bill, um, uh, or Sam, Sam Reese is passing. I remember Sam, you know, just, you know, with just amazing affection, just uh, all. Uh, so the thing I post about my dad, it was always about the people, you know, the, the sports, the competition was great, but that was just a platform, you know, for him and the history that he had in the war and, and how competition was, was, um, you know, how to improve people and teamwork. And so, you know, I'm serious about how proud he would be of uh, how it's all turned out at Claremont. It's just, and, and, and Scripps and Harvey Mudd, it's just, it's just amazing. The story that I'll share very quickly is that um, my brother actually came up with this story and I've shared it before, is that, um, you know, he was our dad, but we got to share him because I think he was a father figure for a lot of other people on campus, especially the baseball players. And um, so my brother told me a story one time about how he was on campus and he was trying to get my dad's attention. So he kept saying, dad, dad my dad was in the middle of a conversation with a bunch of people dad and he, he you know he just didn't even acknowledge it and so finally he thought about it, he goes coach Arcy," and he turned around immediately <laughs> so um my brother and i and my sister are proud to share my father uh, all these years and all that he's uh, been able to do in building this platform and just he would be so proud of how it's all turned out so thanks mike yeah thank you jeff he he gave us the the opportunity to be who we are today. Yeah. And he hired good people to, to promote that. And we've tried, I know John Zinda and David Wells and I, and now Erica are trying to do the same thing to continue to develop the leadership for our, our teams and our programs that will continue that tradition to really understand the value of that educational experience within the CMC, you know, proposition. So, and Harvey Mudd and sorry, CMC, Harvey Mudd and Scripps propositions. Yeah. Erica, we got a question about how um, how spring athletics are shaping up for this year with COVID, and will and will outsiders be invited on campus to watch? Yes, so um, we are open for spectators um, as we wrap up winter sports and spring sports have already gotten underway. Um, for those of you who followed in the fall, um, we had an exceptionally successful fall, um, so much so that we had to almost step back and, and realize that it was just a, such a success to be back here on campus and together again. Um, so we're expecting more of the same um, this spring. I'm looking out my window right now and I can see women's lacrosse practicing and the track team wrapping up and um, it's going to be a lot of really exciting weekends here coming up for the next few months. So um, really excited and also happy that spring sports are outdoors. That always makes things a little easier um, as you're coming out of a pandemic, as we've learned. Erica, any final comments to the group? 
No, I just, I mean, I would like to reiterate my appreciation, both for, I think, everyone coming and sharing their wonderful stories and the amazing um, legacy and foundation you all have set. Um, But also, I think the support that I feel our coaches feel um, and our current student athletes get to experience um, from everything that you contribute to the colleges and the department. Um, This truly is a really special place and I just have a ton of appreciation. So thank you for this special evening and probably huge shout to Evan, Mike, the entire team for putting this together. This was a joy. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Erica. Yeah. Mike, hey, and anything else, Mike? Can I just reinforce, um, I hope you'll take the time to dig into this little encyclopedia that Sean Stanley has pulled together for. It goes back to the founding of the college through so many eras, there are 12 of these presentations. We were so happy that we could um, have January be the month to focus on athletics because we were going to have it tie in with the Hall of Fame event that we would have had last weekend, or maybe not considering the windstorm we went through, but the Hall of Fame will be in March and we will gather then the third third weekend in March, the 26th, 26th of March, yes, <laughs> that's Saturday. Anyway, and we will celebrate 13 inductees into the Hall of Fame to join this group here. And I'm just so grateful for all the people that said yes to participate today. Thank you all that uh, that shared a story and that, that really contributed to the enlivening of this project. Yeah. Thanks, Evan. Thanks, Mike. And thanks to all of you. Once again, all of these programs are recorded. They're live on the alumni and parent section of the CMC website. Uh, Stay tuned for more more virtual and in-person programming as we honor CMC's 75th anniversary. Have a great night, everyone. Feel free to unmute, say hello, say goodbye. Talk to you soon.